Well, I think it's amazing what you can get cheap on eBay these days. I found this. Very unusual looking item. Dying to know what it did and I had to buy it because it was a very, very fair price. The school it came from was uh, King Edward VII College. Didn't know whether it worked or not. It's actually, uh, get rid of that, it's an electronic tube with a very, very nice electron gun assembly in there. Uh, high tension and looks like a six volt filament there provision and a fluorescent screen at the end with some with an unusual probe but after a little bit of um, tinkering I managed to get this working I say it's beautifully made there's a high pressure vacuum in there so if it was to break it would be a quite a big implosion I gather so we've got to be careful so what I've done I've made this uh, mount out of a bit of a board couple of washing machine uh, vib anti-vibration mounts there to say it just pops in and that high tension locates in that uh, lug there there we go say so it needs a six volt filament or probably about three to four amps so what we've done got the old uh, radfield lab pack with the old multi-tester leads which happen just to coincidentally plug into the back so we'll we'll do that now one and two doesn't matter which way they go around because it's ac it's an indirectly heated filament which heats up the cathode in there and uh, releases loads of electrons and we've um, the high tension side is provided by this little circuit which is a little inverter circuit which you'd probably have in a flash gun with a capacitor output there wouldn't want to touch that because it's about 5000 volts so, there we go, if we switch them on, observe, the 6.2 volt filament there, I'll better check I've got that correct, yep, 6.2, I don't want to burn it out because it would be a bit of an expensive failure. The filament is actually causing electrons to boil off and uh, affect the cathode in such a way that um, if we apply the HT, which we're going to do now, it's a six volt battery there. You might be able to hear it whistling. There we go. There's an invisible beam of electrons being uh, formed. They're negatively charged. And this gun here, as you can see, the filament is glowing very well. The electrons are being focused and accelerated by the tube there. And there's a little pinhole in the front. And it's ejecting it in a straight line right onto the fluorescent screen because you can observe there you are very bright very um, amazing bit of kit I think probably years old and got a clue you know this I say the school didn't know whether it worked but indeed it does now, the fascinating thing with um, electron beams is you can deflect them with magnetic or electric fields because obviously electricity and magnetism are interlinked and if you were to get a speaker magnet, which I have here, quite a large one out of a high voice speaker, this will influence that. If I put that up to the screen, you bring it anywhere near, as you can see, you get deflection on the electron beam. Uh, they're called cathode rays and they're negatively charged. So obviously because of the electricity and magnetism are interrelated you can get that beam to deflect so you can quite easily see how radar and television could be made to work because if you had a couple of electronic coils just scanning the beam across you'd be able to build up a picture but another interesting thing which this does this tube is called a perrin tube and what it was designed to do was to prove the idea of the, the beam being negative particles and what you can do if you get a piece of tin foil and hang it from that probe on there and then we've got a bit of fiddle but you've got to get the beam you direct the beam into the bucket which is on the end and you'll see that flicker 
There we go. Get it correct and you'll see them fly apart, but there we go. you can see them moving. So what's actually happening there? You're uh, directing the beam of electrons into that little bucket, which is called a Faraday cage, and it influences the bit of tin foil on the end, uh, which is a very crude electroscope, by the way. Uh, if I had a, if I had one to hand, it would obviously deflect very well. But there you go. Fascinating bit of kit. I hope you agree. To say if it, um, if I cracked it with that magnet, it would uh, there would be quite a large bang because there's quite a high pressure vacuum. You can see the, I wonder if you can see, the electrons there are flying out and striking the fluorescent screen. You can see it from the back very well. Amazing bit of kit. Thank you, I hope you enjoyed it.